Oh boy, what a what a remix from Hux Mod coming into us. Thank you for sending that in. Josh Potter Show at gmail.com is where you can send in your remixes, or you can send in an article like so many Roach reporters have this week. Tis I, Josh Potter, back for another week at Josh underscore Potter on Instagram at J underscore Potter on Twitter. That's where you can buy tickets to upcoming shows, and two have just been announced. Uh, so first of all. Right here in Burbank, California, September 3rd at the Nightcap. We're having another posted show. It's me, Sarah Weinshank, and friends. We're, we don't have the friends lined up yet, but we'll get some. Don't you worry. And then beyond that, September 23rd just announced Portland, Oregon. Coming your way to the Siren Theater. Beyond that, in October, September 29th to October 1st, technically, is Skank Fest. I'll be down there in Vegas for that and then uh, October 20th and 21st we have Pottstown PA uh, over in Soul Joel's and then the 29th of October just announced right here right now Seattle Washington that's going to be happening on the 29th of October those tickets and more all for sale right now up on uh, the links in my Instagram and Twitter and all of that kind of thing so go buy tickets and uh, other than that keep rating reviewing subscribing all those things that you do to help out the show and today we have a very special guest in studio he's about to embark on a dream tour that I always wish I could have done uh, with the Buffalo Bills but he's gonna do it with the Bengals it's Michael Turner everybody what's up buddy who day baby let's go (laughs) now season jacked up before we get into what the tour entails and everything like that I feel like you and I have to come together as our for our fan bases. Yeah. We've gone through a lot together. We killed in the guy. last year. You guys killed one we of killed. our guys on the field. My, my bad, I just want to say. Hey. That's our bad. No harm yeah. no harm, no foul. He's out there in training camp playing in preseason, <laughs> is which is he, crazy to did me. You, was he in the game? Yeah, yet? he played in the last in the first preseason game this past weekend against the Colts. And I thought, you know, I mean, he seemed to be okay. Really what it is for that guy, Tamar Hamlin, is the mental thing is he going to be like Tom Cruise and Top Gun after Goose dies, where he's just like, I, I yeah. don't have a shot. You know what I mean? Can't like half step it. You can't. And so if he hesitates even a little bit, that's going to show. But it seemed like you know, one, after that first play, he was back. And I think if he overcomes that, he can still be. I mean, he was a, a starting safety. I would retire immediately. If you almost died. Oh my God. I would retire on so much less. I would, I always <laughs> see hits and I'm like, dude, I would call my mom and retire at halftime. <laughs> like, who was that guy that did it for the Colts? The old uh, Ohio State. Oh, guy. that was on the Bills too. Yeah. Uh, Vontae Davis. Yeah, that guy. I, he literally, oh yeah, right. Vontae Davis, in the latter part of his career, came over to the Bills and <laughs> it was one of those things where he just realized it's a young man's game as it was happening. Right. And I can imagine that oh, going on. 100%. Where all of a sudden, like, a guy just kind of goes by you real fast and you're like, oh shit. Yes. I am. F- I could get fucked on any play here I, and be out of this. I, I commend these guys every week. Like, the fact that this dude is actually back is crazy to me. Crazy. Um, I just figured he'd retire and, like, actually have a nice career because I think his notoriety, like, not notoriety, but, like, you know, his popularity obviously was at its all-time peak when he died. Oh, yeah, no <laughs> one knew who DeMar Hamlin was. I mean, he was the backup to Micah Hyde. Yeah. And barely Bills fans knew who he was. It was just the fact that Micah Hyde was pretty much injured all of last season. Oh, so he wasn't so, even the starter. He was. Yeah, but he, right. he became the starter because Micah Hyde's injured. Yeah. And now he's still battling for that same backup position, which is a, you know a depth spot in the in the secondary. But Vontae Davis, though, what he did for those who don't know is he walked into the locker room at halftime. Yeah. And he's like, "I'm done. I'm out." And everyone's like, "You're done for what? What do you mean? Like <laughs> the quarter?" Or he's like, "No, no. I'm done. I'm done. done." And he like bef- by the time the rest of the team got to the locker room, his locker was cleaned out, and he was on his way home. Yeah, and he has no regrets. By the way, people were dogging him. Well, he got a rookie contract. He probably made a bunch of money. And then, yeah, the, it's like the manhood of football. It's like people were dogging him for quitting on his team. It's like, dude, you guys could die any week. Have you ever <laughs> yeah. seen Any Given Sunday? That's my favorite documentary. <laughs> it's like, these dudes were di- I remember the eyeball flew out of the Oh, movie. sure. Like that is uh, – that's real shit compared to us watching on a couch. I always look at that. I'm like, dude, the way they get hit. It's amazing that more people don't quit. So it's good to see your boy back because we definitely killed him. Yeah. Um, 
and he rose again. And then, we, I mean, that game was the subject of Dude. so much. Um, I mean, you know, take away the fact that a man almost died on the field. Yeah. The implications of that game. Oh, yeah. It fucked us over more than you. Yeah. But also, like, whatever. We we beat you guys. Yeah, by a lot, too. Like, In Buffalo. Destroyed us. And it was the, the most demoralizing thing. And it was, for us, I feel like it was the culmination of that entire season the the turmoil that yeah. they went through with uh having to move games due to generational blizzards oh yeah that's that occurred true. in buffalo we had to change the locations of games we had to travel at uh crazy hours and get stuck in places and then not only that a guy on our team dies <laughs> and comes back to life and then but people thought he was due, fake. Due the to next our, game. Hey, due to our uh, nursing staff and our medical staff. Right. The, I mean, <laughs> you're uh, welcome, dude. Yeah, the city of Cincinnati. Come on, Christ Hospital, dude. I was born there. So. They put some skyline get, chili in his veins. Just and... in his veins. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that, dude. If I'm on my deathbed, just hook me up to some skyline. I'll probably be back right away. Uh, but what was it? I mean, from a Bengals standpoint, obviously, like you said. You guys got fucked more than us it felt because like that it, game didn't get played. It didn't get played, and then the implications were um, we ended up having to not have a chance to get a home field um, in the second round. Or no, in the oh yeah, it would have been in the second round. Um, so kind of – but we were bitter about it, but also like – because also like one-on-one, -on -one, dude, like – we killed him. They didn't kill us. <laughs> and like we won. If that. anyone should be penalized, <laughs> yeah, it's, like it's the should. team that almost murdered <laughs> yeah, the guy. Exactly. Like, <laughs> um, but but we, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. But that was a weird game. There was such going into here's it. the thing though that's crazy about it. There was going into that playoff game. There was such a union of fa of the fans. Like I was like yeah. between that and the year that a couple of years ago to end our playoff drought, Andy Dalton threw a pass. Yeah, you're on like fourth and yeah, no, we've fourth. we've said thank you. Yeah. so many times. Fourth and eighteen to Tyler Boyd. Yes, from like the fifty-two. It wasn't like in the red zone or something. No, it was like a it was like a fifty-five yard catch. Yeah, it was a crazy like he didn't have to do that play. He could have also just like gone down and like ended the game, ended the season. Exactly. He was like cutting in between. No, he was playing like it was the last play also, of the Super Bowl. We, also, it was for in, some reason. Well, because we were able to keep the Baltimore Ravens out of the playoffs. Mm, there was other and the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, so I mean, by proxy, it helped the Bills break their playoff drought. So that was Bills fans donated just. So much money to oh, right. Andy Dalton's foundations. Andy Dalton is like revered as one of the best Bills quarterbacks because of that. It's, <laughs> well, which he's is not. <laughs> he's not considered that. Never in once. Yeah, never <laughs> once worn a Bills uniform. Yeah. So there was all this goodwill between that and then you know Demar Hamlin and the city of Cincinnati and the hospital and everything like that. People all coming together. There was all this goodwill, and it was all disintegrated by the fourth quarter of that playoff game 27 10 i mean you just you just what got, happened there we, was it we was the shit football. talking i don't know what you guys well no, i don't <laughs> i'm not talking about during the game oh, oh the, the fanhood all of a sudden oh. like after that game it just everything just disintegrated and people were like the Bengals have the shittiest fans well, and the so bills have the shittiest fans here, and here's the it, the issue with the the Bengals fans going into that game was we were just so not we're so disrespected in general by the media. Even when we get good, they're just like always looking for an opportunity. It feels like to tear us down and tell us that we're not good. It's always in the top three conversation. It's usually always Mahomes, Allen, then Burrow. Yeah. And then also the conversation is, well, Burrow just hasn't done this. It's like, dude, Burrow got to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. No disrespect. I love Josh Allen. He's amazing. He arguably is a better force with his running and all that stuff. Yeah. Like overall, you could say he does things that Burrow can't do, mm -hmm. but he's gotten to the Super Bowl. Sure. Right, and then also now he's beaten Buffalo in Buffalo. So like we always feel like we're slighted, and even after that game, it was immediately like Kansas City's gonna get him all that stuff. So that's the, we're just bitter. We're just we just never get the even when we do good, we never get the the pat on the back that we feel like we deserve. And so mm -hmm. that's that's what I think you you heard. Which Bengal player was talking all the shit after that one? Thing? And everyone thought he was talking shit about Demar Hamlin. Because oh. he did like the three or something. He did like yes, and I don't remember who it I was. I don't know who it was either. That was that didn't that was like coincidental, but that didn't feel good in the moment. I remember <laughs> yeah. that because I was like, ooh, don't. It was do that. a receiver. It wasn't T. Higgins, was it? No, it was. I think it was. Or was it a Tyler? corner? It was. It, it was a corner. It was, it was. Wasn't it Mike Hilton or was it? Um, was it Eli Apple? 
Oh, it could have definitely been Eli Apple. I think Apple. it was Eli Apple. Eli yeah. Apple yeah. does shit like that, too. Eli and Apple. also, he could have been intentionally doing it, and we'll never know, because he does that shit. Eli Apple, also, yeah, because I feel like Cincinnati, he had to do anything to get the Cincinnati fans on his side after the Super Bowl oh. loss. So I, I now it makes sense that it's Eli Apple. Looking back at it, zooming out, if you will, now it's all yeah. ringing clear. But it was kind of discouraging to me, because, like, you know, there's so much, like, tribalism in this world between political parties and things, like, where people get very ugly, and I always thought the tribalism in sports was like innocent like it's the one place where i'll have tribalism and that'll be it and it's like there's no changing me but at the end of the day there's really no skin in the game like people come up to me at the comedy store all the time because i wear bill stuff and they're like how do you know how do you think the bills are going to do this year like as if i'm not going to say they're going to go 17 and 0 (laughs) in the super bowl i've said that every year since i've been alive yeah and i'm never going to change an answer and i wholeheartedly believe it every preseason yeah you believed in ej manual yeah oh my god i have an ej manual jersey <laughs> sure you do. i had all, i believed in every <laughs> single one that they trotted out in front of me and every time they disappoint i just go next time it can't they can't always be like this and it can't and it can though it can it, it actually can both <laughs> yeah. of our fan bases know it can it can be for be perpetual yeah in perpetuity well, I, I will say about the debar hamlin game that was funny going into that i was literally like one of my my brother came out to la and then he has a close friend that we're all pretty good friends at this point but they grew up together in um down in one of the beach towns so we're like all right let's go out there watch the game together so it was like a night that was a bills regular season Bengals bills game. yeah it was like a big game it was monday, monday night, night football, football? yeah, yeah. So, and it was to decide the division i mean it was yeah. huge and it was to decide on another personal note fantasy football championships it was that yeah, game it was, like was week 14 it was the last week of the fantasy football season the Super Bowl for many, 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 That's many leagues, right. and it was the Monday Night Football game, so that meant it was the deciding game of that week. Yeah. And everyone had, like, you know, anybody who was in the Fantasy Football Super Bowl probably had DeMar, uh, All the Jamar Chase, yeah. Stephon Diggs, yes. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. In my league personally, which I won, after much deliberation, I had to become a lawyer basically to win <laughs> my to league. At the end. Yeah, I had to litigate my own victory <laughs> because at the end of that game, they called it and I was still in the lead. I had Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs. My opponent had Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Yeah. And he tried to lobby to, to somehow like split it or. No. You know, I said, fuck that. I went in with my briefcase in front of a <laughs> Supreme Court and I argued and I won. You got that victory. I did. I hold that trophy proudly, and he puts an asterisk on it, but he can go fuck him. Chris, you can go fuck yourself. That was a, I, did, I did forget about that, too, because that was a lot of implications. But then I was just wanting to beat you guys. And then we were just down in Huntington Beach just, you know, hammered drunk first quarter, and we're like, you don't think he's dead, do you? Dude, it was – I was, it was so lucky I watched that game. in my apartment because, like, I, I had friends who were at bars, and they just went home because mm-hmm. it was just – it was early in the game. And the bar was just silent, and there was no, like, well, do we hang out and drink? Everyone was like, I think we just watched a guy die. Dude, I had a lot of friends at the game, and they were like, it was the weirdest thing in the world. Also, on a side note, I will say that the Cincinnati crowd, that's probably the best place to have a man on your team uh, almost be killed because we were like very we're nice people when it sure. comes to it. <laughs> we're a lot of good Catholic people I think in people. Buffalo you could, you could have a you know a guy dive I think you know you no know, I think so too but like Philly no they like if, that thrown, was, <laughs> if that was at Eagles dude they would have thrown the batteries at the dead body oh the God. ambulance would have never they would have knocked the ambulance over as it tried me? to come into the uh, stadium at, there. if that was at the Jets division game <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean like that'd be crazy <laughs> so I was thinking about that that night too it's like dude since he's probably one of the better places for that man to have yeah. died and come back uh, we would have brought the ambulance out out of the field for DeMar Hamlet <laughs> but the Dolphins fans have vandalized it I um it was sold for parts somewhere <laughs> yeah. in Fort Lauderdale <laughs> yeah today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by the Game Time app. Oh my goodness, life is stressful. Buying tickets for an event shouldn't be stressful. With Game Time, you can easily snag tickets for all sports, music, theater, and comedy near you. It's an awesome way to get tickets to any upcoming shows, and they always have a ton of flash deals and last minute seats. I love when they send me a little email, and they'll be like, Nicole from Game Time is letting you know about a price drop. And there's a little flame emoji in there, too, when it's an extra special uh, price drop. I got Angels tickets for a dollar recently. Sure, the Angels are terrible. uh, But that is some pretty good savings right there at the end of the day. You can get even an image of the seat that you're going to sit in. 
They got the views so you can test it out before you go in there. And I got to tell you, that comes in handy, especially in a stadium or a venue that you don't really know about already. You get to see the sight line. It's amazing, as a matter of fact. And I love using it for sports, for concerts, pretty much everything. Uh, Go check out the Game Time app right now. Their Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price and you're going to find tickets. Uh, and if you find tickets somewhere else in the same section and row for less, Game Time's actually going to credit you with 110% of the difference. Now that is customer service, my friends. So right now you can snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Potter for twenty dollars off your first purchase. That's again code Potter, and you're going to get twenty dollars off your first purchase and that could go a long way that could take your whole friggin family to an angels game at the end of the day terms apply again create an account and use code potter for twenty dollars off download the game time app today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed now to tell people what i have because we've gone on such a tangent you are going to be following the Bengals to every away game that they yes. have this season i'm doing a show the night before and then i'll do some man on the street stuff pregame with the, the tailgating stuff and so, that starts this week thursday night in atlanta i'm going preseason baby so they go at atlanta falcons preseason nobody gives a shit about the game but I'm i give a there. shit about preseason i, I, I love preseason i just like to see what's the you know what's the depth chart looking like what not only that where like? else do you get to see like college QBs that get drafted in the fifth round play in the NFL. You're like, Dude, oh my God, Jake Hayner's playing the for guy, fucking Saint, uh, the Saints right now? This the is crazy. Jacksonville kid just made like one of the craziest throws ever. He's a old Ohio uh, Ohio University guy and a... Uh, CFL. NS, or CFL, yeah. That's yeah, like CFL. Nathan Rourke came yeah. in to play for Jacksonville, who's like that. a CFL legend, by the way. Oh, is he? Point. I didn't know. Now, I mean, because he's like a Canadian-born player too, so okay. the Canadians love him. And he played in the CFL and was, like, amazing. And now he's getting his NFL shot. And people are like, it's fucking stupid that he's not a number one somewhere. And you're like, well, come on. Calm down. Yeah, yeah, relax. Calm down, buddy. (laughs) You know, let's relax. He's on Warren Moon. Yeah. All right? Drink your Molson's and calm down. Yeah, so now he's, like, uh, he played in that preseason game, and everyone's like, this kid's electric. But it's like, yeah, Trevor Lawrence is still on the team. He's a good backup. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to have a good backup. I love seeing all the backups. I mean, one of the ones that was funny, I watched the Chargers-Rams game, and it happened in SoFi, obviously. Obviously, they both play there. Yeah. And on the Chargers is Max Duggan from TCU. Oh, yeah. I liked him. And then on the Rams is the dude from Georgia. What the hell is his name? Oh, like, uh, the kid. Bennett, Bennett, the Bennett, old man. Yeah, Stetson, Stetson Bennett, Bennett, the yeah. third, who's like 65 years old. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, they played against each other, <laughs> and they played against each other last in, in that the, championship game yeah. or the bowl game. So that was crazy to watch that, and people you know, overlook that kind of thing. Stetson Bennett, by the way, a funny little stat about him. Stats he, uh, and Bennett, you read yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> he, uh, he played with Sony Michelle at Georgia. Really? And Sony Michelle has already gone to the NFL, yeah. played a full career, retired before Stetson Bennett yeah, so got I, drafted. Yeah, that's crazy. That's how old Stetson <laughs> Bennett is. The name well, Stetson, you're like, is he yeah. from the, the fucking 20s? Right. Yeah, he is. Which side of the much. war were you on? The Civil War. <laughs> yeah, exactly. North or South, big guy. I... um. <laughs> No, but so yeah, I'm born and raised also in Cincinnati because you're born, you're Buffalo through and through. Oh right? yeah. Mm-hmm. So like you know how it is. I mean, it, you were born into this shit. It's a yeah. hard. It's been a hard fanhood to to have a for a whole life. And so I've always loved them. I've loved them through bad shit, through mm-hmm. good shit. Um, so we're definitely prideful people in that way. And so I've always wanted to do this as I started comedy. I've always had like things that I've done throughout the seasons to kind of just mess with fans or whatever, have fun with the Bengals season along with me being being a funny dude on, on IG. And so I finally was like, shit, I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to go to every game. And why not just combine it, tap into the fan base, have some fun. And, yeah, before every game this season, I'll be on the road with them. And the night before each road game, I'll be doing a show in every city. So, yeah, Atlanta's coming up. DC's coming up. Let's Cleveland. pull up the schedule. What, what, which ones are you like uh, Except, looking forward to? So, first, the say. best city probably is week two of the regular season, or I'm sorry, the second road game of the regular season is Nashville. That'll be fun. Mm, so yes. The Titans, obviously. but then, October 1st is the game. Yeah. So, so I'll be doing 930 is the September 30th is the show. It's Zanies? Are you doing it? No, I can't because that's the weird thing is a lot of them are one-off shows. Oh, I that's right. So you can't do a weekend. Yeah. A lot of indie stuff. So it'll be Third Coast Comedy Club. Nice. Um, There's a nice contingent in Nashville. There's a good Bengals fan base. It's a five-hour drive. 
So we're going to tap into some people that way. My dudes, the Bangle Boys, uh, do a lot of fun, like, kind of Weird Al Yankovic cover songs for the Bangles. Oh, that's so cool. So they'll be, they'll be there tapping in. And, um, yeah, Nashville I'm excited about. The Niners game is fun. It's weird, though, because you're actually in Santa Clarita. Right. So I'm doing a San Jose show. Um, but the most excited I am, actually, is I've never been to – a Pittsburgh game in Pittsburgh or a Baltimore game in Baltimore. Oh, the division rivalry. I've never done it. Yeah. And so, because it's always like, I don't know, fuck Pittsburgh. And then I'm just like, I don't want to get into a fight. I think I'm going to be angry if we lose. I know if I win, I'm going to say some shit and they're probably going to, like, so I'm I'm now I'm 36, so I'm not literally sure. actively trying to avoid fights all the time. Oh, me too. That's all I try to do. It's so. so funny, by the way, trying to actively avoid fights. Like, I don't ever think I would ever find myself in a situation where I would get into a fight in any capacity, especially a football game. Because I, where I do take it seriously, I don't take it seriously enough to, like, have violence about it. That's what I mean right. why it's, like, the most innocent of tribalism. Like, yeah. where it's, like, someone's, like, the Jets are better. I'm, like, okay, man. You know, like, I'm not going to do yeah. anything really about it. But... I when went it to comes Arizona State, so there was a lot of unchecked white aggression there. <laughs> and you would just get into a fight over a U of A ASU game. It's like, you know how dumb this rivalry is? Right. Nobody even knows it's a rivalry. <laughs> but at that game, I've never seen more fights. I. But it, the thing for me is, like, I don't even suspect a fight could happen. Like, I was at a bar recently, <laughs> yeah. just the other night, and I, like, bumped into a guy. And I, w- and I, like, touched him. I'm like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. And I was, like, I thought laughing it up with him. And he was like, don't fucking touch me, bro. And I laughed. And I was like, I was like, I'm sorry, man. You know, like, I thought we were joking around together. And then my friend that I was with, she goes, no, he's going to fight you. You should go over here. And I was like, oh, that was real? And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was real. Like, I, like, tried to still yeah. somehow. That's how, like, also, it's like why would that guy want to fight me yeah. for, like, just bumping into him slightly just call your dad yeah just tell just him you love him like dad. you know what i mean like who hurt you at what age was yeah. the trauma dude why are we fighting at this buffalo wild Wing? i'm sorry your penis is oh so small <laughs> yeah where it says a reverse happy hour at an applebee's <laughs> what are you mad about we're all mad we're here so you're looking forward to all and that i would imagine the steelers would be the one i'm looking at the list here that yeah. you would dread the most but probably i would dread it but i've I, I want to, I mean, so the other thing that I do, I'm going to do a stand-up comedy show the night before each game, but what I also do is uh, I go to each, I have been doing this for the past like four or five years. I go to tailgates and I just mess with fans. So I like, I would go to Packers, I've gone to Green Bay, I've gone to Dallas, I've gone to San Francisco, um, I've gone to some cool, Oakland, or not Oakland, actually I should say Vegas. Right. Um, But Raiders fans are always great. And I just go mess with them. I kind of you know rib them a little bit but also by the end of the video it's usually me smoking a blunt or drinking with sure. the tailgate and, and they've so, all been cool they've all been cool because i always i always to your point we're just talking about football yeah 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 and like and it's also pregame i think about this a lot too people are always like dude you should go after the game i'm like <laughs> oh, no, fuck dude. no dude no dude yeah. no you go pre- everybody's excited like every, you're getting your second beer in your third yes. shot in, whatever like you're ramping up to the game. Right. So then you go and you kind of – you can talk smack about them as fans, but it's all fun at that point. And so those those videos have been really cool. Really, really cool. I've done them a lot. I've gotten some good, like, recognition from some players. Nate Burleson fucks with me. Shout out to you. <laughs> um, and uh, now this year it will be focused on just who the Bengals are playing. So t- – to the excitement level, I, I've never gotten to talk shit to a Steelers fan, right. to his face, in a nice calculated way. I'm a very, I'm right under, I'm smarmy enough where like, you won't realize I was fucking with you till two minutes later sometimes. Mm. So I like doing shit like that. Yeah, the It'd Steelers fans might never find out. 100%. I don't think, <laughs> they're not playing with a full deck out there. <laughs> missing their Jackson 10s, you know what I mean? <laughs> what Now, there must have been like a place where, sure, everyone you found cool people within every fan base, but yeah. which one collectively has been the shittiest? Oh, the shittiest. Um, oh, damn. The shittiest is probably... I mean, you know what the the lamest slash shittiest? Rams fans are... In the way that what I'm trying to do is make a funny, fun content about football and shit. Well, you got to find Rams someone who gives a shit about the Rams first. The fucking lamest people yeah. I've ever met in my life. They're like, who are we playing today? They don't even know. They're like just there for like a picnic. They or have something. no idea. <laughs> they have no idea who the fucking. They have no like sense of history. I was trying to mess with somebody calling 
uh, Jim Everett, Chris Everett, mm. and they were like, "Who's, who's the Jim? only one who cares about that?" Is Jim? Everett. That's Jim Rome. Yeah, <laughs> or Jim Rome. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Jim Rome too. Yeah, but uh, I, I mean, I went to Week One. The Bills played the Rams last season. Yeah. And my friend came out for the game, and he's like, "Oh, they're gonna fuck with us because we're wearing Bills stuff." I go, "Dude, they're gonna be more Bills fans there than 100%. Rams fans. It's gonna feel like a home game, and it did." Yeah, and it's like no one. Ca- it's not like the Dodgers or something. Dude. It's like no one gives a. Fuck. I was at SoFi when the I was fortunate enough to get uh, a hookup for Super Bowl tickets when the Bengals played the Rams in oh, SoFi. Nice. And That's I had to watch Super that Super Bowl. That's the Super Bowl. Where they're playing in their own stadium. You're walking out. I walked out. That game was tight. It came down to the fourth quarter. It came down to a shitty holding call on a third and goal. Eli like, Apple. Oh, my God. No, it was oh, Logan I'm Wilson. Sorry. It was just bad officiating. Eli Apple did get burned by. Yeah, he got burned. That was what yeah, Cooper Cup. By Cooper Cup. But the whole game, honestly. But um, either way. The game came down the fourth quarter. It was crazy. It was emotional, all that stuff. We're walking out of the stadium. The Rams had just won. Me and my brother walking out, like, I'm, like, ready to not fight somebody, but that was probably the closest where I wanted to, like, really get into a conversation. The most dejected like, you had yeah. to have been. It's and a I'm, Super Bowl. And I'm angry, and I want to talk about how shitty that call was. I want to just defend my team. You're walking around all these Rams fans. They're just like, hey, fun. that was fun. <laughs> yeah, Good they game. would have acted like, the same way if the Bengals won the Super Bowl. Instead of the Rams. They would have been like, wow, we went to the Super Bowl. 100%. How about that halftime show, Dr. Dre, huh? 100%. Did you see that? I didn't even know they had there was that white rapper Eminem. That was great. That was wild. That I can't believe good. he showed up. Gee, Snoop Dogg. Golly. Oh, my Lord. So what a what an event. That The Rams fans are the lamest. Um, oh, yes. Lamest indeed. For sure. And then, I don't know, the craziest, the shittiest. I the, think you know, you're going to. You know the shittiest are actually is Cowboys fans are really annoying. I bet. Cowboys I'm gonna say are... I'm gonna put out a little prediction yeah. as you're about to embark in this little uh, on this. Well, it's not little; it's big. It's an eight week tour. Yeah, ten week. Two, ten week because pre-season of the preseason. Games, yeah. That's right. And uh, playoffs. I'd imagine if it's we're in gonna the do pop up shows, and then okay, I'll do cool. two shows in Cincinnati. I'm gonna pop up on All right. Cincinnati. A couple times. Now I'm an, I'm gonna just uh, make a a guess here, an estimated guess that you will encounter the shittiest fan base on this one because you'll be visiting your AFC North opponents. Hundred percent. I'm going to guess the Browns. Yes, I think it'll be the Browns. Too. Cleveland. Well, why, and, and why, though? Because I, I lived there for a year and one football season during that year. It was when M- Colt McCoy was the quarterback of the Browns, and they had Peyton Hillis. And here I come from the Bills. This is like 2011. Yeah. And here I come from living in Buffalo where the Bills are the team, and we haven't had any success since the early 90s. Right. And – you would think that I was coming into a place where, like, it was completely different. It was like the, I don't know, Bills fans, we loved to party. Yeah. So we made the party more of the event than the football game. We're like, whatever, we lose 100 to nothing. We got fucked up. Right. And we're, like, lighting shit on fire. Same with ASU Sun Devil fans. We know so, exactly. Do. When you go to the Browns, though, it's like they take every loss really difficult. And they, they're always like, woe is me. Yeah. And they're just so bitter and shitty to themse- to each other, by the way. Well, they think that they've won like five Super Bowls. Yeah, something. they haven't done they anything. They think that they're like, it's like, they think that they talk shit about the Bengals. It's like, what have you done? Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you're you the only team that can't talk shit about yeah, us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, If no- I'm them, I embrace it wholeheartedly, and I just have... There are people that have, like, a great tailgate with the Browns. So, no, 100%. I mean, sure there's actually definitely- a lot of... Like, I actually... Yeah. The, the thing that I always think, it's funny that Cincinnati talks so much shit about Cleveland, but then when I go to Cleveland and I talk to people from Cleveland, you're like, we're the same people. Yeah, you're we're actually all Ohio. Ex- we're actually the exact same yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is way more sad than I thought. We should hang out. <laughs> What's your number? At least IG. Yeah. And uh, so, like, that's kind of always weird to me. But, like, if you really talk to really annoying Browns fans, it's like they'll they'll say things like, you know, we have the biggest fan. Their stats are so lame. We have the biggest fan base. They're the oldest. How do you like measure? Or something like that. Also, Paul Brown... We we started you. Yeah, the yeah, Bengals yeah. started you. If you know anything about history, right? That, and then the, you fired them, and then we made a petty. We made a. We were the first spite shop. You guys got to wear Bengals those. Were a spite uh, shop. You wear those white uniforms, or the Browns are going to wear the white uniforms to fuck with you. You know, hundred percent. Right? I saw because that. that's like a thing. I don't even, as a Bills fan, don't understand it. But like, evidently, there's a history between the Bengals and the Browns uniforms. Obviously, they're very similar in colors, and like you said, the Paul Brown situation. Yeah. So now the the Browns have started wearing these new. Uh, white uniforms that kind of resemble the Bengals' white uniforms, and, and everyone's the, bringing that up again. And so the, well, I, the old Bengals uniforms were literally Paul Brown was removed from the Browns thing. Also, we we fathered your whole team. 
Yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> um, and then he went to Cincinnati and literally just threw the word Bengals on the helmet. It's yeah. the same white unis, brown. It, also, also, you're orange. Why is it orange? Hey, we ever talked about that? To fuck it's, with the Bengals. It's an orange helmet. It's yeah, to fuck with the Bengals. Weirdos. Well, try fucking with us on the field because you can't yet. <laughs> All right? And I don't. Also, imagine getting a fucking rub and tug in Cleveland, dude. Deshaun was doing better there. in Houston. The, the <laughs> Cleveland rub and tugs are probably. Tough looking, heavy set Asian bras, dude. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I'm sure they're spit shining it differently with some stuff you never even heard about. But well, like, that was the one market they had to send to Sean Watson to because they're like, he's not yeah, going to want him over here. Yeah, exactly. If there's any place we can keep him in line, <laughs> it's, it's up in Cleveland. Yeah. He's not going to be true. spreading his cheeks for anyone up there anytime oh my soon. God. Well, this is going to be a very sports centric show today. And uh, let's get into some of the headlines yeah. that, that are going around right now because um, there's quite a few, actually. Beep, beep, beep. It's an exciting time. Sure. And before we get, because mm. we do have some preseason football action coming up here in a Not second really. for clips. Let's see. I found someone sent me a video. I think this is someone in your family. Oh, this is that chick. Yeah. Oh, I actually can't watch this. Uh, I forget about this. You can't watch. Isn't that your mom? No. My mother's from, she's from Brooklyn. She would never do this. She just ended up in Cincinnati. Oh, my God, dude. That is, you know what's funny? That was in a preseason game last season. Watching those videos, like, there's a couple of pretty tough looking Cincinnati fans. Also, dude, yeah, chicken front. She can't even turn around to watch. Neck brace. I think it's, yeah, that woman couldn't turn around at all to notice what was going on. So she, she, the woman in front of her very well might be like, is the woman, this, what a hell, what a prison that woman with the neck brace lives in where she's like, it sounds like the woman behind me is puking. Meanwhile, you know what she did? (laughs) Made it through all four quarters and and made it to the Leonard Skinner cover band concert (laughs) later that night. I think she went and got another beer right after this. This video was done <laughs> recording. Damn, puke and rally, dude. Puke and rally. The, but it's funny watching videos like that of like hardcore Cincy people because I I know that person. Like I sure. don't, but I do. Of course. They're now, if Batavia. that was a you know the colors were red, white, and blue, I would be like, oh, I know these people too, you know. <laughs> yeah. But in Bill's country, we don't uh, we don't narc on each other like that. Well, do you think that was a Bengals fan doing that? Was, I think it was a Steelers fan. Oh, you videoing this? The, the it Bengals was a, fan. It was a Steelers. Uh, yeah, fuck them. I see. Oh, that that. is narky. See, we have like the Bills uh, videos that get leaked out are often involving fucking in the parking lot. Oh, nice. Which is always you got to keep. You got to create warmth. Exactly. That's true. Uh, Also, there was like a story of a girl blowing a guy for a Kiko Alonso jersey one year. Jesus Christ! Right in the parking lot. I love. When it's a jersey like that, that's amazing. There's he had a lot a couple of uh, hundred tackle seasons, so good, good. Line he there. had some good seasons with the Bills, and then we traded him. I mean, pretty uh, to the Dolphins, smart. right? No, we traded him to um, the Eagles. Then they traded him to the Dolphins. We oh, traded okay. him to Chip Kelly for Lashawn McCoy, straight up. Oh, uh, okay. Which was an awesome trade. That's a beautiful trade. And uh, but another thing, like there's uh, evidence of Bills fans, like people will only narc when it involves sex, like. There's a lot of pictures of uh, from the back fingerings going on. Jesus, is it consensual? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh okay. There's <laughs> uh, there was one game I was at where everyone was like, I went to the bathroom and there was like a bathroom that was blocked off. The cops were in and everything like that. And I'm like, huh, what the hell's going on? Then like the following day, the news had a report that uh, local two local teachers were caught fucking in a bathroom uh, while their spouses were both out in the stands. I respect that. Which was in, crazy. Buff- in, in Buff- Buffalo. Yeah, they lost their jobs. Oh, what? The Which I know that that's why it's fucked up. That's fucked up that they lost their job. For it's is that a uh, yeah, crime? That, that is not a crime. It's a crime maybe to fuck in public. Yeah, but it's not a crime to ha- to be an adulterer. Or it's whatever. crime against your vows. Yeah, for sure, for it's sure. a moral crime. Yeah, but I Grow mean, up. during game day, who knows? Maybe those spouses were like, "Go have fun in the bathroom." I like that though. Buffalo the bills chicks. are up. Buffalo chicks sound down. Yeah, I love going back to Cincinnati seeing those Ohio chicks. Dude, Midwest chicks are great. They'll drink you under the table, and they'll still blow you at the end of the night. Yeah, it's or, just or not even wait till the end of the night. They'll blow you in the third quarter. Yeah, right under the bar. <laughs> Gee, golly. What's the other playoff uh, preseason video we have here? Because I, that's another one. Preseason's back, and I'm so fucking hyped about it. Oh, this is at the Lions game. Here's a, a gentleman is who is uh, so psyched for football to be back that he's videoing on his phone. Let's see what he's doing. 
This one doesn't have sound. There's an old man sitting there with his phone, and he's uh, zooming in. Was he trying to get a better look at Jared Goff? No, uh, he is zooming titties. in on the. Uh, yes, he's titties. zooming in on the cheerleaders' ass. Oh, is he? Is and that titties. What it is? Yes, the cheerleaders are on there. You can see it right here. Uh, taking some screen grabs of some ass. Ooh, oh, there it is. Nice. Well. Good oh, for this man yeah, to discover no. the virtues of technology. That actually is impressive. Yeah, he's utilized. He, this man has astigmatism. Can your and, grandpa do that? No, well, he's dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just wish I could FaceTime him one last time. I know. I wish but I he couldn't figure that out either, even if he was alive. My grandpa died during flip phones. If only he could have made it long enough to just. Uh, oh, know, right. Who knows what he? That's impressive done. though that he uses. That's smart. A lot of kids wouldn't know how to zoom in and watch. I don't know about that, but I think more kids are like, (laughs) you know, I I maybe get one of those things where it's like you can't see what's on the screen unless you're looking right at it. What are those called? Those screens that go over? Because he doesn't realize other people around him can take notice. He thinks he's like fucking 007 over here spying on a girl. Be like, well, they don't even know what I'm doing. I would argue against (laughs) that. I think there's actually also that age threshold where he doesn't give up. Fuck. Sure. And that's where he might be. You, oh, you you're telling me. He's actually like helping you guys out. Like, check this out. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think he's going to like the bar. The You know, he goes over, over to the VFW to have a beer <laughs> with his buddies. Yeah. And his buddy's like, check this out. And he's got a cane, one of those canes with the mirrors on it. And he goes, <laughs> oh, no. dude, you're not even cl- like, you wait till at- I show you an iPhone. Yeah. Look, it looks like I'm looking at the floor, but I'm looking at a cooter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of those Figure things that, out. that you buy at Spencer's. Straight into the VFW group chat. Yeah, right I read that yeah, as yeah, soon yeah. as you said uh, that. No. <laughs> Salute to service. Yeah. Oh, someone else said that too. Yeah. yeah, I read that right as you what said that. What do you that. think he was? He uh, he doesn't look. He doesn't have Vietnam War energy. Is that Korea? No, I think. What is that on no, the back of his young. hat there? Is someone, that like some sort of emblem? There is a flag on it. Someone said he almost died in Normandy. Let him cook. Yeah. Like, well, I doubt that's the case. No. I mean, he doesn't seem that old. No, he's but he's got some sort of armed that forces is what, hat. I was One of those. To think uh, about that recently. What are the old people now? Are these old, Vietnam old people? I would now? say Vietnam. Yeah, seventies. Yeah, if you're twenty, then you're born in the fifties, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. say Vietnam. You know, sixties, fifties. S- yeah. Age. My father was born in fifty-five, and he's like going to be seventy. So my dad much. was born in forty-three. Isn't that crazy? Oh my he's, god. He's a dead man. Oh. Um, but phew, he had a good run. Yeah. He would be doing shit like that. Yeah, for sure. If I showed him how to use a Samsung. <laughs> well, so, you know what I do. I mean, as a blind man, I showed some people this the other day. <laughs> I think on my stream actually because I. I lost my. Gl- oh no! It was on Patreon. I did a Zoom hang, and I took my glasses off, and they and I dropped them. Actually, they fell, and I don't know where they went. And they are clear. So what I do when I Velma can't find my here. glasses <laughs> is I turn on the camera on my phone, and I can put it close to my face and zoom around and look around that way. That is depressing, <laughs> but also really ingenuitive. Yeah, ingenuitive. Yeah, I mean, no one taught me how to do that. I just go. Huh, I've heard of- I know how I can see because, like, if my <laughs> glasses fall like behind my bed or something, I'm fucked. Yeah, that's true. This <laughs> so all this is, so it helps me. You're I just go like, around. ah, there they are. <laughs> You're like you know? fucking what's his name, Jordy in Star Trek. Yeah, the fucking <laughs> with this thing. Also, side note, thinking about my father. Mean shout out to him raising me, being from LA. My mother raising me, being from New York. They end up in Cincinnati. And they were like, they didn't, they didn't do that thing the parents do where they like force the fanhood on you. Sure. They're like, you're from Cincinnati. I was the only one born in Cincinnati in my family. My brother and sister were born in New York. And uh, they were like, you're a Bengals fan. Huh. You're, you're, now, 30 some years later, you could argue they should have given me another team. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, Reds, Bengals, Bearcats. My, my mother was born in Buffalo. And so, I mean, she never like forced it on us, obviously. She never forced religion on us either. Yeah. And we didn't really pick that one up. But the Bills fandom was just kind of like a part of me. Yeah. I don't know what well, it, And my mom, you go to my mom's house now and she's got, you walk into her, her front lawn as a giant Bills flag and stuff like that. And I remember that as a kid, but I thought that was more because we wanted that. Yeah. But I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot you're... You've lived here your whole life, too. So my dad worked for the NBC affiliate in Cincinnati when I was young. So we would go, like, Reds, Booth tickets. Oh, that's awesome. Did you meet Tom Brenneman? Dude, I I, I know you're saying that in jest, but yeah. I'm not saying in jest. He's been on this program. Do I fucking... Did I stand for Tommy B? We we were the first interview he's had (laughs) ever since... Are you serious? Yeah, I was the first. It made USA Today, baby. Is he so genuine? Yeah, he's the nicest guy. Dude, I looked at him one time. I I was like, Tom... You knew my father because my dad knew Marty, his his mm. dad, 
is a legend in Cincinnati also. Yeah. He's like, you knew time. Jim Turner. And Tom was like, how is he? And he's like, all right, we're in, <laughs> we're in an elevator. And the way he asked me, I was like, dude, you really care? And the elevator doors closed, and I never forget. I didn't know what to say to him, and I just said, God bless you. <laughs> my hand out. My brother still laughs about you that. You Nazi point. salute? No, yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't raise it too high. Uh, but yeah. Ask Marty time. Yeah, yeah. Dude, ask Je- Marty that's time. Jeff Bradley. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, now you want to get a good guy on the podcast, get Jeff Bradley. Oh, dude, the cowboy dude, himself? I'd love that. That is one of the greatest He's busy. voices in baseball. It is the greatest voice. It's like it's an archetype of a voice. It's great. And I've always said that the Reds might be my favorite baseball team because I learned about baseball listening to Marty Brenneman Yo, and nice. the Cowboys. So, I mean, because we used to, some, for some reason. Well, you probably listened to Joe Nuxall and Marty Brenneman. And then it turned into. No, Joe. no, no. This is, I'm talking like in the 2000s. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I, I mean, you. before uh, Marty retired. And I remember, because I remember Best team the ever. season that Marty retired, I was very sad. And he was starting to go kind of wonky. <laughs> yeah, he got he he knew. Well, he also would say shit about the Reds that you he used to not say. Right. He also would he would always hold him accountable. But you're like, ooh, Marty is not happy with this organization. Right. right. And so he and so I was listening very <laughs> intently because we were pl- like, I, you know, we were doing radio in Buffalo, but we were playing all this Marty Brenneman sound because he was saying wild shit. He was like, in that that clip right there, this the he asked Marty, Marty time. time. Yeah, yeah. Famously, the whole thing we've played it before on the program uh, in the <clears throat> early days of it. But his whole thing, that, that Ask Marty time, they would do it every game where a listener would write something in. And they asked Marty, like, what's your greatest fear? And he goes, I got to tell you, it's dying in a hotel room by myself. <laughs> oh, my God. And everyone's like. At least he didn't and say. Then the, and, and Brantley's like, <laughs> well, you can always call me partner. You know, like he's always, like, making jokes. But, like, he's making this long, dark, and he's, like, pausing. You can tell he's, like, looking off in the distance. That's amazing. And in the meantime, he's like. And Vado two one with the <laughs> yeah, 100%. he's a true pro. Dude. <laughs> he's the that's, fucking and that's why Tom, Tom we fought the whole thing. Yeah. Tom called that home run because it it's, was like breathing. It should be taught in schools. Yes, no, what it is. Tom it's taught in broadcast. What Tom Brennan did in that in the, the apology is continue to tell you exactly what was going on on the field, even though it was on TV. And you still didn't need that color commentary that much. He could have just allowed it to happen. Mm-hmm. He's a pro. A, He's pro. a pro. And now, you know, it sucks because I don't know if we'll ever have with the young broadcasters, no. if we'll have the same kind of thing. Because no. this is a big story, actually. It involves a broadcaster. I got so Ooh. many emails about this at joshpottershow at gmail.com. What happened? It involves the Orioles broadcaster, oh, yeah. Kevin Brown. Did you hear about yes. this? Yes. So he's on the air. I watched it three times. And he yeah, he's on the air and all he did was talk about the Orioles and how they've struggled against the Rays in the past. Three and twenty two. He didn't say the N word. He didn't say anything about a religious group. He didn't say, you know, anything salacious. No. That's all he said. And he didn't say about anything about dying in a hotel room alone. Not even close. <laughs> and he was barely critical. He was just like we, you know, the Reds or the Orioles have to, uh, you know, do better against the Rays if they want to complete this transition. Super accurate. Yeah. And so they, the team, suspended him. How long, too? Like a little, like a couple of weeks. Right? Well, they suspended him. They suspended him indefinitely at first, but then the broadcasting world lost yeah. their minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have Gary Cohen? Can we play that? I don't know if this is, is that the I'll get in trouble for playing this. No, Gary Cohen is uh, that's Steve Cohen, the owner. This is Gary uh, Cohen, who I do believe is on the broadcast of either the Yankees or the I think it's the Yankees, right? For uh, the okay. Yes uh, Network. Yeah, I know he's a New York guy. I feel like. Let's see what he says. Game at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg. Kevin, during his opening, talked about how the Orioles had had trouble winning in the past at Tropicana Field, but that they were doing better this year. That was really all he said. Yeah. And for that, the Baltimore Orioles management decided to suspend Kevin Brown. Let me just say one thing to Baltimore Orioles management. You draped yourself in humiliation when you fired John Miller, and you're doing it again. And if you don't want Kevin Brown, there are 29 other teams who do. (laughs) <laughs> Let's not oh, get crazy. Man. Let's not get crazy. The other yeah, teams this, are like, since he's all set on this yeah, guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got Tommy Thralls and Jeff Brantley in the booth. Yeah, down. now if he was like, uh, the 
The Orioles are struggling against the Rays, kind of like I'm struggling to get my penis erect with my <laughs> wife. Hey, there he is. That would be a good one. I would like that. Sign me up. Then then he, I would say the other 29 teams are interested. How about the John Miller burn? Bring that back. He yeah, still feels right? bad about the John yeah, Miller Yeah, I mean, burn. Jesus, he's still burning up from that one. Is, and yeah. nothing would happen to John Miller. I don't know if anything Is he the guy the Giants got now? Isn't oh, he okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like yeah. a legend, but whatever. I'm yeah. sure he's happier in San Francisco. There was other uh, fallout from that, too, was there not? Was there another video that we had? Also, I listened to that. I was like, dude, Kevin Brown still pitching? That dude's gotta oh, here be, he is. Yeah. <laughs> like, that has got to be 50. <laughs> well, he did return to the booth, it says in this article. Here. I would have quit. I think that's true. The move I mean, would have been to quit because you would have been exalted and you could have started you could a podcast. You could have been like a hero or something. You could have been a little hero. Some other team would have hired you in a second because they would have looked like righteous guys. Yeah, the A's or something. So he says here, though, his statement when he came back, he goes, unfortunately, recent media reports have mischaracterized my relationship with my adopted hometown Orioles. Mm. He wrote, the fact is that I have a wonderful relationship with the organization and our ownership and front office has fully supported me since 2019 when I first came aboard. Did they have a gun yeah, to his head when you, they dude, fucking... This is bitch made shit, dude. I mean, God, could Grow you up. be more of an... Now I'm out oh, on this guy. Yeah, right? I was so in. Could you be more of an Orioles cuck? <laughs> yeah. I guess he is thinking about the media landscape in today's world and he's like, I'm lucky to have a job, so That's I'm true. going to just continue i ask that everyone disregard the distracting noise of the past few days i have worked closely with the o's svp greg bader for the past four years and john angelos and i have a solid dialogue based on mutual respect we are all good here in birdland what a cuck birdland <laughs> now what? i can't wait to go to baltimore for my fucking to talk shit about them <laughs> yeah you can bring him up and be like remember your cuck reporter <laughs> yeah. who got suspended and then came back and sucked on the Oriole dick. Also, if this was uh, WWF back in the day, he would have switched sides and been a raise announcer by the end yeah, of the yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it would have been fucking amazing. <laughs> well, the Rays are having their own troubles at the moment. Are they? Yes, they are. Is this are. a good segue? Was that an unintentional segue? <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of was a great segue. Yeah, no, it works <laughs> out great. That. And uh, right now, I don't know, are you familiar with Wander Franco? No. So Wander Franco is a shortstop for the old Tampa Bay Rays, and uh, he's pretty good. The okay. Rays are pretty great this season. No, the Rays are good, yeah. And uh, so uh, Wander Franco, though, he's going to be away from the team for a little while. Oh, I think I saw this. That's because uh, the ma uh, Major League Baseball is investigating allegations made oh, through yeah. social media that he has a relationship with a 14-year-old girl. <laughs> I Oof, don't know how now this is tough. This is crazy how this kind of like came to be. It's like there are this faction of the internet that it's kind of makes me feel like that old man filming cheerleaders earlier, where it's like, I don't know what's going on. All of a sudden the world's gone and gotten in such a big hurry. Yeah. And I don't really understand how good there's all these internet detectives. And basically TikTok and Twitter have figured out that Wander Franco is dating a 14-year-old girl. Dating? Like taking her out to uh, fucking Discovery Zone? I mean, David I mean, Busters and shit? What the I, fuck's going I on? I do <laughs> believe there have been some oh dates God. and things. Do we have video or uh, anything we could show or any... Uh, pictures here the allegations against franco seem to have originated from a couple of instagram accounts over the weekend one account with handle at el real imperiod something uh puerto rican i'd imagine uh shared screenshots of franco kissing a girl on the cheek with her face obscured and said the girl was 14 years old no. though the origin of that claim was unclear there was also a text message posted by King Kong Fabuloso these are the journalists now today. oh my <laughs> god King Kong Fabuloso is going to get well, a fucking he's, honestly, Pulitzer honestly he's reliable yeah, I mean, <laughs> evidently it's referencing a girl who could cause problems for someone in a team rule about not talking to minors, but the sender of the text message is not identified and no further context is provided in that post. With lack of sourcing and scattered information in these posts, it's difficult to know what to make of this. There was other ones where the girl was shown wearing his number five jewelry that he wears. All the, See how he has that oh, around so his neck? Just, I she thought they would have a better that. better Spanish word for pedophile. It's just pedophilo. <laughs> I, was I was like, dang, I thought that was something cooler. Yeah, that one I... That's actually cool, though. That's fine. It is kind of a good one because I, I go, there's no mistake in that one. Yeah. 
I go El Gran Numero Five or Numero Cinco Pedophilio. <laughs> pedophilio. pedophilio. Sounds like a SoundCloud rapper too, though. Yeah, Pedophilio. pedophilio. Oh man, I got Pedophilio's latest. Uh, yeah, that's good. Did you hear that last drop? Dude? He's got a Metro <laughs> Boomin beat on that motherfucker. And so all of this kind of was circulating via the internet, this, dude, I just, and by sources like King Kong, Fabuloso, sure. etc. I just spent a day in Disneyland with my girlfriend's fourteen-year-old niece and her boyfriend. 14 year olds fucking suck dude I don't know what this guy's got horrible taste well it's the old uh, <laughs> line of thinking where you go like how do they I mean I was in a hotel recently where I uh, I checked in and also checking in was like a softball team from a high school yeah and I remember sp- explicitly saying to the girl I was with, I go, I don't know how anyone's fucking these things because yeah. I can't even tolerate having them around, <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> you know, for like two seconds. Yeah, I can't even tolerate the noise like, alone. It's a, it's, it's a hard out for me, but for this baseball player, it sounds like it's a hard <laughs> in. And that's disgusting. I'm sorry. He evidently took her to prom, though. Was there something, what? a report of that, Kirsten? Did you see that? that? How old is this uh, kid? They, do these minor- on that. The best tweet I saw is somebody saying, don't send him back to the minors. He's going to love it too much. Yeah, that's (laughs) (laughs) the memes. I mean, out of all of this, the memes were just there was another one of uh, of, you know, Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill from uh, Moneyball. And he's like, great movie. Billy, this is Wander Franco. He hits like, you know, it says all his stats and everything like that. But he is a pedophile. <laughs> 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 so the, yeah, and it was like other people are like, get ready, A's. Also, sideball on, on Moneyball. I love that they make that a fucking hero story. It's like they also had three of the greatest pitchers of that decade on <laughs> no, that team. I know, it is silly. At no they, point do they, they say kind Mark of gloss Walter, over that. Barry yeah. Zito, and fucking Tim Hudson. Dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> they kind of gloss Moneyball. over that part. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, but did you see Johnny Damon's brother? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, this guy, this this Tampa Bay Ray is struggling, dude. That's a tough look for the so boy. So he's uh, is at, it, how's he hitting though? I mean, before this, he was hit, for hitting average? great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was hitting uh, some high, some big numbers, some plus there. defense. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, he's gonna. He didn't travel with the team to uh, San Francisco for their series against the Giants while they invested. That's probably the, the best move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay home for a little yeah. bit. But let's get into some news things before we wrap things up, shall we? Ba-dum, bum, ba-dum, bum, bum, bum. And now, because you're going to be traveling yeah. so much, flying back and forth, are you nervous with all the cancellations, delays, and all the melee that's been occurring on planes lately? I look at it all. I don't know. I'm a knock on wood guy. I never, it hasn't really impacted me. Have you seen the lady who. Could fuck up some things with scheduling now. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But have you seen the lady who thought she was next to a alien or something to that effect are you worried about I seeing something that's not real on the plane uh, no honestly i got eyes on her i hope we see her out there you know what i mean <laughs> she, no she she's popping on ig now yeah did um, you see her she uh, announced yesterday she went through mental yeah she she's losing back. her mind she's back we have her here and she looks like now when her everyone DM said when she up. was in the uh you know in the original video that she was a dime but then there's this one and some people think like this that she's fake that this is like a really a psyop or something that that's not really her that's a different woman well i you, but i think she's just a little more dolled up there's a picture yeah of no her. i think she's yeah have you ever seen a makeup tiktok because <laughs> right exactly these bitches be doing some crazy shit also okay? the filters are ai i yeah. mean you know what i'm saying so let's see real quick kirsten can we watch the video of her talking i want to hear you know what, what she she's says. saying hi everyone it's me Who's Tiffany me? Gomez, right. probably better known as the, the plain crazy lady. plane lady, which is completely warranted. As you know, I have been unwilling to speak on the viral video, but I do finally feel that it's time. First and foremost, I want to take full accountability for my actions. They were completely unacceptable. Distressed or not, I should have been, I should have been in control of my emotions and that was not the case. Can you pause it real quick? This sounds like a hostage video. This sounds, yeah. This sounds like she's being like, uh, like Kara and Kevin Brown are in the same place here making the same kind of <laughs> statement. He was doing the same thing like, I get along great with the Orioles organization. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, why is she breathing so wildly? In between weird? sentences is crazy pauses. But so, also, I mean, is that hair length the same? That's the thing. People were all kind of like, that's a lot. Is this I mean, you can get lady? extensions, I guess. But. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while since she's been on the plane. But also, who's asking for this? No one was like, come I out and make it... a statement. She's not like a, the president of the she... United States of America. Like, why do we have to care? What... Also, what's her dot com? What's she selling? She's clearly trying to maximize yeah, this. Oh, her Twitter page is like brand new. Well, that's the thing. Stay People are saying that she's trying to also. She's trying to ma- she's trying to get a bag or here. something. Yeah, yeah, I'm and sure. somehow, and I well, don't know if that's oh, going to be a podcast. Dude, honestly, the OnlyFans would pop like oh off, god off yeah. rip. Crazy plain lady got an OnlyFans. Oh my God! I think people were looking for it when it that other thing went viral originally, yeah. <laughs> but now it's like she's trying to manufacture something. It's like, is she going to get signed to the Call Her Daddy Unwell Network? Like, what are we talking <laughs> about here? Yeah. What is she going to do? I mean, is she going to start interviewing Drake like Bobby Althoff? I mean, <laughs> this all seems manufactured to me. Like people the crazy are thing is, it could work. And she could fucking crush it. <laughs> she could get a bag. Her. I don't think it's her. Because when she says her? it's me, she shakes her head no. It's, oh, well, Jesus what? Kirsten. Like, this is a hostage. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just <laughs> saying, <laughs> subconscious <laughs> body language. Kirsten, She's like, hi, guys, it's me. It was perfect to bring this up because I think Kirsten is definitely on team. This is like a, an AI that would be, psyop thing, right? I mean, You're telling me she bought a website well, address just for this one video? The questions around Something's it, too, are coming. like, like nobody knew who she was for like weeks after that it took like the internet to your point can find out that that dude's banging a 14 year old but they can't find the <laughs> chick on a plane that had 300 <laughs> people and then secondly there was nobody from the plane that actually like really talked like there's th- there's clearly two 300 people on that plane sure nobody was saying anything after that was one of the most popular things on the internet so that is weird this could i don't know oh my god now so the, what if the whole thing's fucking staged that you know how easy it is to duplicate a plane set? We live in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they always look so fake on uh, movies, though. That man isn't real. And it's like, she's not I don't real. think you're real, lady. Yeah. Are you looking in a mirror? What yeah. if she was just looking in the bathroom mirror and she's looking at herself? Yeah. She got the verified button started back in July 2023. Well, yeah. That was right after the in- incident, right? I don't know. No, I think it was before. July. What is it? No, that was probably the end of July. Wasn't yeah, it? right. Because we because it's August, right. middle of August, right? Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think she like got off that plane and made a website. Honestly, that she probably had to buy that name. That's a pretty common name, isn't it? Tiffany Gomez. Tiffany Gomez. Oh, Gomez. I don't know. That could be rare. Gomez, actually, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Either um, way, it's all very weird, and some people are thinking this is all fake, and they yeah. have the conspiracies out the wazoo, and some people think it's just a kind of a play to get a bag. I think it's a play to get a bag. At the very least. Also, it could be an AI play to get a bag. You know, AI people are getting paid, too. They're not AI people, but, like, AI platforms. Could what? just be AI. Yeah. Oh, if my God. So this AI, whole thing's going to be AI? Dude, there's, like, AI rappers. So now I can't even get pr- I can't even get duped by real people anymore. Now I'm going to just start getting duped by the fucking computers? Yeah. Yep. Oh, 100%. my God. I don't even want to continue. AI makes me <laughs> legitimately just not want to keep going. I know. Like, it doesn't even make me want to try at life. I'm like, can the AI just give me an allowance and then I just live in my hole and that'll be the end of me? Because I don't, it just, everything I hear about it makes me want to fucking. Right. Are we going to have AI football players soon and stuff? I mean. Don't take my job. Take my life. Yeah, just take it all at this here, point. AI. Well, also on the on uh, the topic of planes, we have a story here. 9-11? Well, that's uh, that happened. Yeah, Soon. we're a couple up. of couple. Of, I mean, yeah, we're coming up on the twenty uh, second year. Oh my lord! It's able able to drink now. It is. I know twenty. <laughs> yeah, twenty two years. It's able to drink nine eleven. It probably has a like a fully formed like palate on drinking. And too. now it'll start. It doesn't start just forgetting. beer bongs or anything. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like I kind of like old fashions now. <laughs> have you ever? Uh, known anybody or yourself been involved in the mile high situation on a plane no 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 uh, it's a tough place i feel like it's like well, people like who fuck on pl- i don't yeah i don't even want to get up to pee let alone get my penis sucked on but. yeah <laughs> uh, yeah that, uh, that always is very fascinating to me also like dudes confidence on planes are always crazy too like when you sit on a plane every girl that goes by there's a level of me that's in the past been like, dude, I think I could convince her to bang me on the smallest bathroom in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think high. if I see a pretty girl on a plane, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm dressed like a child. 
<laughs> There's no chance. But speaking of confident guys, T-Bone sent in a mile-high confident guy. This guy is maybe the confident, most confident of them all, and him and Wander Franco can uh, get together and share stories here. As a Boston doctor was arrested and charged after allegedly masturbating and exposing himself while a 14-year-old girl was sitting right next to him on a flight. Ooh. Federal prosecutors said Thursday that 33-year-old Dr. Subita Mohanty was sure. allegedly masturbating and exposing himself while on a Hawaiian Airlines flight from Honolulu to Boston. That's quite a long time to be in the air hey, look, with a masturbator. You never know how people are dealing with these wildfires. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He's just Sometimes so you got to let it out. Yeah, he yeah. lived. Oh, God, been, thank God. I've been, having, I've been backed up for five days. i got to let this J.O. out. Yeah, he's headed to Boston. He's like, oh, my God, I can't wait to land and get some clam chowder. <laughs> But within first, the, let me create some clam chowder. <laughs> this was all within the view of a 14-year-old girl who was sitting next to him. Mohanty is in primary care physician in Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. The criminal complaint states that around halfway through the flight, the 14-year-old saw Mohanty had himself covered up with a blanket, reaching up to his neck, seeing that his leg was bouncing up and down. Well, that could just be nervous flight yeah, jitters. Right. Or uh, restless leg syndrome. Restless leg syndrome. Every now and then I see somebody with restless leg syndrome, and I, boy, I kind of wish they were masturbating because then I wouldn't feel bad about being like, would you stop it? It's it's restless leg syndrome. It's my third leg, but (laughs) (laughs) it's pretty restless right now. I've got restless dick syndrome. (laughs) Party uh, (laughs) acid. That's called being a teenager. And he was just trying to show another teenager. I do. Yeah. I do feel bad, though, when I see somebody with restless leg syndrome because I want to be like so badly. Cut it out. But I know that they're probably like, they want to stop it as much as you want them to. And I try to have a bit of empathy in that moment. So if I would have saw this guy with his, his, uh, Blanket up to here and his restless leg syndrome. I wouldn't have gone to masturbating. I would have had empathy. I would have been like, well, he's just nervous. Maybe that's why he's stroking. What do you, what do you think he was watching? What movie was he watching? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm curious about, too. <laughs> a short time later, the teenage girl saw that the blanket was on the floor and no longer covering the 33-year-old man. Oh, no. And she could allegedly see that he was masturbating. Mm. Prosecutors state that the minor saw his pants unzipped, exposing his genitals. Sure. The minor then moved to a different empty seat for the rest of the flight, according to the filing, with all these empty seats, why are you sitting near a guy? J. Owen. J. Owen in the fr- I mean, yeah. forget that he's masturbating. Just sitting near a guy when there's empty seats. Yep. I would have moved to that empty seat anyway. Poor to sit, dude, that's why you can't trust these teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> the minor, uh, oh, in a court filing, uh, the, also stating that Mohanty was on the plane with a female companion who he was making small talk with. They were asking each other basic level questions such as, what is your favorite color? <laughs> Sounds like the man from the Old Country Buffet video. <laughs> Don't talk to children. That's what he's beaten off to is your favorite color. <laughs> uh, I mean, what kind of small talk is that? He's like, tell me about your favorite <laughs> color. Oh, yeah, tell me. At other buffet-style restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> when they, oh. Where do you go Mag- to school? Magenta really gets me off. Mm, yeah, tell me about tell me again about purple. <laughs> <laughs> Say fuchsia again. The man is being <laughs> charged with lewd, indecent, and obscene acts. And when asked about the allegations by an FBI agent on May six, he denied them and said, "I have no recollection of that." And then there's someone who was like, remember I mean, the who favorite? remembers? I the craze do remember the off. favorite color part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She said blue before I blew my load. <laughs> <laughs> what Dr. Mohanty is accused of doing in front of a 14-year-old girl is reprehensible. Today's arrest should make it crystal clear that the FBI takes crimes aboard aircraft seriously. So you wouldn't take it seriously if it was on the ground and he was <laughs> masturbating in front of a 14-year-old? Is that why Wander Franco might freely play in Major League Baseball after all this? Uh, <laughs> everything from sexual misconduct as alleged in this case to assault interfering with the flight crew and theft if you've been the victim of a crime aboard an aircraft or have witnessed one take place we ask that you report it to both your flight crew and the fbi the fbi i hope this guy gets the same pr team as tiffany gomez (laughs) (laughs) he could turn turn this into a profit (laughs) gain i think it is interesting to me that they are making such a uh emphasis on in-flight crime because I it. never thought about that. You know, when you're out at sea, that's international waters, brother. Maritime law. Yeah. You can throw a body over the sea and you get rid of your wife pretty Shout out to 
Bobby Wagner. Got yeah, my boy. <laughs> and what's the guy from uh, Beretta? Didn't he do that too? Didn't oh, he... Beretta. No, isn't that him? That's Robert Wagner. Oh yeah, my bad. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm saying Bobby Wagner's a. My bad. You're right. I'm I'm shortening Robert. <laughs> R.I.P. I Robert didn't catch Wagner. on. R.I.P. Beretta. That's the same guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, never. I mean, you know hey. who knows what what happened on that boat? Christopher Walken was on that boat. That's right. Or wh- that was the other one, wasn't it? Christopher Walken was on the was uh, on, one with um am, am I the chick from uh, West Side Story. Yeah. Wasn't he? It's I think this is all the same, same thing, Natalie right? Wood. Wait, Natalie Wagner. Wood. Robert, Bobby Wagner killed. Robert, Robert, Wagner, Robert Wagner was Beretta. Called, yeah. Yeah. And, he, and then Natalie was married to Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood was one of the most famous. Wait, didn't Beretta in almost kill? Didn't he kill another wife then? Not in the nineties, wasn't there a thing in the like nineties or two thousand? You might be thinking of Phil Spector. Yeah. No, there was some. Oh no! Oh, I do know what or you're talking about. Or did he get about. raised up on charges or no, something? And in the in a car, didn't they kill? Him? Yeah. Yeah. Well, who is that? I think this is different people. Um, that was a good one too. Now we wow. gotta look up Robert. Did Beretta Wagner. do two murders? Dude, that'd be a double Beretta. Double Berettas? <sighs> That's wild. I know it, or maybe I'm mixing up who killed uh, Natalie Wood. Yeah, Natalie Wood wasn't Beretta. I didn't think. Yeah, we might be mixing that one up. Who killed Natalie Wood? Now we got to know. I mean, I don't think the wor- I don't think the government knows, let alone because <laughs> who who played number two in? Uh, that's in, Ro- Robert White. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought is the Natalie Wood guy. Yeah. Um, You're right. And Christopher Walk was on the boat with yes. who his who whoever his girl was. And he definitely, I mean, imagine coming around that corner. Oh, yeah, it boy. says Wa- Robert Wagner was uh, officially cleared as a person of interest in Wood's death. When yeah. was that? Uh, in maybe 2022. That, okay, so maybe that's what I was thinking of. I don't fucking know. No, you're, there is another. I know you're talking about, and I can't think of Because it was like right after OJ. I think it's Phil Spector, isn't it? But you know the music producer? Yes, of course. Yeah, no, he got he, killed he, some he did some shit, and then there's Roman Polanski, fucked a girl in a hot tub. It all blends together. All the muckiness blends together. After Hollywood, a while. baby. Hollywood. Well, what what a, what place, a place to be. And, but hey, now you can't do any of that stuff on on an airplane, and I think that's important. <laughs> that's important to note. <laughs> I think that's I'm glad important. you because, like, like I said, international waters. Evidently, the sky. Yeah, we got when you're in that out. tube, you know, air marshals and all that. Sure. Well. Let's move along to another story real quick before we wrap up here from Ashley. She sent this in. It's entitled Donkey Rabies, which is a dubious sort of uh, title of an article. Fifteen children and teenagers from a small rural town in Morocco have been treated for rabies after reportedly gang raping an infected donkey. Wow. What? Uh, I mean, Kirsten's face. Jesus. <laughs> I just looked up to see Kirsten's That's face. That's going to get you every time. What's wrong? So. Also, that is <laughs> that, is, that assumes that they raw dog it. Uh, yeah, I'm glad they got rabies. Now they can't drink water. What did you say? Why? What? I said, why do we always have people fucking animals on this show? I. It's really. I mean, you can't get asked a different way than the donkey. All, I mean, we're all animals. Yeah, we're all animals. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of Trent Reznor, and <laughs> he said it. <laughs> The youngsters, aged 7 to 15, were rushed to the hospital after discovering the animal had the disease, according to local reports. The youths from a small tribal group spent a week at the Mekhreya Belkasiri Hospital. Oof. I mean, why even go to a hospital, probably? While the donkey was killed to prevent further people from being <laughs> infected. Because other people, they, hey, <laughs> get over here and kill this rabies donkey because we don't need anyone else fucking it and getting rabies. <laughs> Morocco, so African, because I'm thinking about just dick size. How do you get it in a donkey? I don't think I got the. Well, I mean, I judging I the length for that. Judging by how they did it, I don't think they cared about where they put the their dicks. I mean, they might have been fucking it right in, the in its nose and its fucking yeah, ears. whatever. Uh, the families of the 15 young Good people point. are said to have reacted in distress and horror after being <laughs> yeah. mocked throughout the small town <laughs> in the northwestern region. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, say. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'd say. That's weird peer pressure, too, being like, <laughs> all 13 of my friends fuck the donkey mom, yeah. so I had to. If, yeah, that's the, They were going to call me a, a gay loser if I didn't fuck the donkey. Our society says, Yo, are you going to jump off a bridge? All your friends jump off a bridge? But in their town, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you're going to fuck a donkey if all your friends fuck a donkey? It's like, ah! You seen this donkey? <laughs> he got eyes on this thing. If all your friends fuck a donkey, are you going to fuck it too? 
I don't know. Only if 12 went before me. Jeez. I'm not going to be the 16th guy. That is the the 15th guy on, oh, that, on that gangbang? You can't, I don't even want to do that with a girl. <laughs> I know. That's, they did it with a donkey. <laughs> with a donkey. Also, they're raw dog in this thing, then, right? Is that yeah, assumed? Yeah. No, 100%. No rubber? 100%. Yeah. You don't waste a rubber on an animal. The number of infections... <laughs> The number of infections is feared to be much higher. <laughs> well, they don't know. How, there could have been way more people fucking this donkey. <laughs> Some families reportedly took their children to hospitals outside the region to avoid humiliation. <laughs> so they, they're, 15 is what we think might it, it might be at, but there could be more because they went to other hospitals. I wonder if the donkey liked it. I mean, this donkey. It's the town. That's what they're going to call the slutty girl in town, too. You're the town donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Rabies is almost always fatal as soon as the symptoms are shown. That's real? I guess, mm-hmm. but treatment oh. before this happens is very effective. The disease attacks the brain and nerves and is usually caught from the bite or scratch of an infected animal. It sounds like a zombie movie at this point. That'll be the craziest origin oh of a zombie God. movie. And the kids started, fu- that's a real life zombie the, movie starts is because kids were fucking a donkey in some Moroccan town. <laughs> I just hope Brad Pitt's alive to save us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. World War Z. What World, was the World origin of it? Now, if they had that, if that was how coronavirus started, and people were like, that's racist to say it was a lab, okay? <laughs> it started from children fucking a donkey. Grow up. Come on now. Do your research. Stop being a racist. <laughs> it's found throughout the world, particularly in Asia, Africa, and Central and South America, but very rarely in the UK in a small number of wild bats. They're talking, what? of course, donkeys of, uh, were rabies. able to put out? Oh. <laughs> of rabies. But yes, <laughs> Morocco... Has a surplus in donkeys it's like, that it's like, how like pe- to fuck. <laughs> like how people go to Thailand for <laughs> yeah. for boy pussy. <laughs> yeah. You fly into Morocco for donkey. I like how you call it boy pussy. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to just an asshole <laughs> yeah. of a boy. At other buffet style restaurants. Well, Wander Franco, maybe take a trip there. to Thailand next time. Hey, Wander Franco, come see me on tour. <laughs> 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 hey. Well, tell everyone, I mean, the tour kicks off in Atlanta uh, yeah. tomorrow night, by the way. Yeah, August 17th. Thursday in Atlanta. So is the game Thursday or is the game the Friday? Friday? Okay, perfect. So yeah. Thursday's the show. Tomorrow night's the show, and uh, it goes on from there. Where's the, where else can people see? DC, and then we're in Cleveland, Nashville, uh, Phoenix, San Jose. Will be Jacksonville, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and then somewhere else. I, and for forgetting. people to find the uh, venues and tickets. So and all yeah, that. Turner Comedy, Instagram, Turner Comedy, TikToks, Turner Comedy. Twitter, all that stuff. I got all the links, all that stuff. Uh, you can get tickets there. So come through to a show. Say what up. If you're a Bengals fan out there, come through. If you're a fo- football fan in any of these towns, come say what up. Congratulations. It's an inspiring sort of tour that you've uh, no created problem. for yourself. And uh, I'm happy for you, and I can't Thank wait to hear bro. all about it. We'll have you back uh, so you can tell us how it went. Yeah, for sure. Too. We're uh, playing the Bills this year, too. We should talk about that's that. That's right. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And so uh, other than that, folks, I just announced two shows, Portland and Seattle. Portland is going off very soon. It's happening September 23rd. Uh, Tickets up on my Instagram at Josh underscore Potter or on Twitter at J underscore Potter. That's where all the links can be found. Also, we have, uh, like I said, Seattle that we just announced. That's happening October 29th. And there's other gigs there, obviously, in between October 20th and 21st. Potsdam, PA at Soul Joel's. Then later on in the year, December 1st through 3rd, La Jolla Comedy Store and uh, Side Splitters around Christmas time. All those tickets on sale now, so go get those. And we will see you next week right here on The Josh Potter Show. Thank you. Hot single friends. Must, yeah, must cut meat. Children usually prefer smaller portions. <laughs> Like this. At the tip of the meat with only Shout out water pressure. Front. How's that for you? That's fine, thanks. No, don't do that. How's that for you? That's fine, thanks. At the tip of the meat with only a little pressure.